By Garbo is a play that exists between cinema and theater. The whole play is about the development of media-based propaganda in the 20th century. We find three historic characters, uh, Franco, the dictator of Spain. General Francisco Franco Bahamond, the most arguably successful dictator in terms of years. Kim Philby, who headed MI6 during World War II. Kim Philby is a fascinating guy, he worked his way up through MI6 becoming quite important, basically giving tons of allied secrets to the Soviets. Willem Canaris, who ran Abwehr, the uh, internal security uh, police for Germany, orchestrated 16 assassination attempts against Hitler. He did the right thing, all the while maintaining his position in the Third Reich. These three guys are basically stuck in purgatory, looking for lost spy material that will justify their acts, most of them pretty horrendous. It started um, with uh, Sheila bringing us the script. Uh, we sat down and uh, just fell in love with it immediately. Kevin fell in love with it immediately. Philby comes in advocating for the kind of spies that we see in movies beginning in the 30s, like Third Man, these famous spy movies. And there really isn't a way to express this script without a pretty intense use of video and film. I'm a movie slut and I'm also a research nerd and a history student. Sheila, the playwright, is an extraordinary historian. She knows so much about it. She has forgotten more than any of us ever knew about it. I had no idea that it could ever be realized with the talent and the multi-layers that are happening here. It's such a huge show. It's the biggest show that I've ever produced. I've worked several shows in this room. This is pretty monster. And we have five video designers on the show, so it's massive. This is unlike anything I've ever done or even seen before. Video in, in, in general is so, is so new in, in theater that almost everything you see is new. In this case, particularly. There's something like 23 or 27 projectors uh, in the air being used in this show. I think it's probably around 15, 20 speakers I have in this state. It's a huge, immersive screen. The opportunity for a video designer to work with 140 feet of continuous projection area is pretty unique, especially in a theatrical setting. And what they're putting in right now is a thing called the eyeliner that allows us to project full resolution, full color video into the air on stage. The eyeliner technology is really susceptible to dust. So yeah, a lot of vacuuming. It's fun to work with the eyeliner when a show is character driven, so you have characters on the surface. You know, what can you make them do? We've done things like duplicating an actor or having an older version of an actor talk to his younger self. The video and this whole matrix of tech is like a fourth character. You can always get something from the wall, from the video projection, from the, the eyeliner on the screen in front of you. So the audience is immersed in video, surrounded by it. As an audience member, that's a lot of imagery that's going to happen in your peripheral vision. There's a lot of stuff to look at. Um, which is exciting for, for the audience, and we also we always wanted it to be this idea of what is what's going on in this peripheral world. We have three video designers that are uh, just doing the video that's on the inside, and we have two video designers that are just doing the buildings outside. Outdoor projection, it's mainly to attract people to know where the theater is, one, and two, have some semblance of what's to be expected, so we do big video here. It's really exciting when they ask Piam and myself to do this, because, I mean, this is the largest scale I've gone being, you know, doing an outdoor projection. Then we have a, a set designer, our sound designer, and our lighting designer, our costume designer, um, uh, our composer. The music in the show, Spy Garbo, that, that I'm composing is anxiety-laced compositions, almost like swells, and then it'll sort of explode like the way emotions explode. <laughs> We're basically in perpetual tech rehearsal. We have tools that let the tech come to the actors instead of the actors having to wait around for the tech. I love working with tech, but it, it was weird because we really started from the first day. It's amazing because they're all in the room all the time. Uh, they have to work and it's tech immediately from, you know, from day one. We're kind of building off of each other's ideas. I'll see a piece of uh, video cue and I'll, I'll create something for it. Uh, at other moments, there's no video yet for it. And then I'll see like, okay, that's what's going on with the actors and the, and the film. 
and then I will uh, respond to that, and then and then they'll respond to the sound. Having three pretty experienced video designers in the same room riffing, it's amazing how quickly ideas develop. We're each doing very different parts of what video can do. I have to give it to this team here. It's one amazing team. The whole thing is to create a night where they come in and they're wowed and they really don't know why. You know, maybe wowed by the technology, but ideally wowed by the show itself. I never expected that it would be so three-dimensional, multi-layered, and yet so simple. When we get more traditional audiences down here, they're usually surprised to find how accessible the work is, even though it is experimental. At the end, what matters is the, the emotion that that scene gives. It's not a history lesson. It's not a test. Don't have to know anything. You come in and you take a ride. Total, just total immersion. It's the, you, the audience is a part of the show. It's just you're absorbed. The actors are so good and, and they're being supported so fully by what's around them. Not subsumed. I think the balance is just wonderful. I would like an audience to, to be surprised too. To come in and go, who are these people? Oh, that's interesting. It's truly going to be beautiful. It's, we're pulling out all the stops. We're just really excited. I'm one happy playwright.